Hi all. Oh, yeah. Hello. I thought I had to go live on my account. No, 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 no. You are live now on your account. Oh, okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so we're live on two accounts. Yes, we're live on Woodfield Pavilion, which is this one. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. Really, really sorry about that. There's a bit of, a bit of technical confusion going on there. And um, we're live now with Elena. So hopefully Yay. everyone can see us. Well, I've already, I've already sold the tamarind, um, so we're slightly ahead. Great. Okay. Look, do you know what? We're going to start. We're going to start. I want to start now because I'm really, really enthusiastic about this and really keen to see what you're about to cook. So, Elena, start yeah. cooking. Tell us what you're going to cook. And okay. also, tell us, tell, us, tell, us, tell us a little bit about um, how you got into cooking in the first place and tell us a little bit more about the recipe. Okay. So, I'm cooking um, plantain burgers with a tamarind and uh, chili jam. And that's also with some um, okra fries. Um, I started, um, I've got an old school cooker here. So um, just bear with me. I started cooking uh, seriously when um, I suppose sort of more sort of semi-professionally, um, obviously self-taught when Wesley was going to uni. Um, so um, it was very important to me to actually um, teach him how to really cook. He'd been there in the background, but I, this time it was about taking it down to stocks and sauces, how you do this, because he was going to go to university. Um, and then I got scouted um, by Crazy Delicious, the production company. And so when that happened, um, and I auditioned and then was chosen to go through, I realised I had to start to think like a chef. And that's when I, I really sort of switched things up. So I was quite obsessed at that time. Fabulous. Excellent. So um, you've, you've thinking like a chef, how, 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 how would you say that that changes from thinking like a, like a normal cook? Um, I think you have to um, really um, think about the ingredients that you're using in terms of how you're going to add flavour. So it could be whether you're um, thinking about grilling, charring, about layering um, notes of flavour. I'm just frying off the onion and garlic here. Um, to start off with the uh, tamarind um, jam. Can I have a wooden spoon with? Um, so, yeah, so it's all about really um, getting quite obsessed. I've listened to podcasts on the way, um, you know, to work. And then, um, yeah, just really be and buying recipe books, but really trying to understand them. It's not just about going through pretty, um, you know, recipe books. Um, but it's, um, you know, it was really trying to get into the mindset. I mean, you see lots of beautiful pictures um, yeah. of all chef's creations. Um, but it's about finding your own style and working out what works for you. Uh, but I really wanted to understand ingredients and understand how flavours work together, but also um, work on what I felt worked together as well and what ingredients I wanted um, to do. But I didn't have any, you know, any... Um, any training and a lot of the things sometimes you buy a recipe book and it's really quite alien you have you're thinking yeah. i don't understand it you know you read the recipe and really you're none the wiser and that's exactly how i felt um but i guess i used that to my advantage and thought well let's put it together another way and see what happens brilliant yeah we've got some really interesting ingredients that we're using today for your um plantain um burger with the tamarind yeah chili and the okra fries um can you tell us a little bit about the so explain what you're doing now sorry because just for, just for a few people that might have missed the beginning yeah okay so we've cut up the um onion and the garlic small um we are uh, just frying that off in some olive oil and then we're going to add um the plantain um so we're going to cut that up aren't we wesley all right my sous chef um so we're going to cut, cut that up, but I'm going to start cutting the chilies and hope that um, I'm sensible with that um, because I'm not very good with chilies. Um, when I say I'm not very good with chilies, I always I wear contact lenses or glasses, and you always have to be like, "Don't touch the eyes," <laughs> and then inevitably you forget and touch the eyes. Um, so, so we're going to add we're going to add that as well. We're, um, it's going to have all the seeds in because I didn't feel it was. Um, I mean, people can do it to you know to how they wanted but i quite like it you know quite spicy so i'm going to add that there 
um, now the blackened, the really ripe planting we're going to add. We want that to be nice and gooey. Um, and that is, that'll hit a lovely base note um, in, the, in the chili jam. So not only are you putting chili, uh, so not only are you putting planting that you've fried, um, but you also um, are having the layering note of planting, um, you know, in the jam. So it's kind of like di different, um, you know, different notes. Okay. Elaine, is it possible to move the camera down a little bit more so that we could just see the process of it? I will do my best. Yeah. It doesn't slow good. down if it goes yeah, down. Yeah, no, don't, don't go down too far because we want to see your face. Too far, yeah, because otherwise it drops. <laughs> can you see that? Is that better? Yeah. I think we can. I think we can. It's just um, my you, you, might need to, you might need to occasionally bring the pan to the camera just so that we can see it. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just the chilies are now browning off. Whereas it's cutting up the, um, the planting. Yes, please. Um, really go through it with, um, with the knife. Yeah? Okay. Like a sewing and knife. This plantain that you're using now, is, is, did you say it's, it's a very ripe plantain? Mm. So how... Mm. Yeah. How yeah, yeah right, it's, right. it's um, squidgy. I mean, it, it'll soften down, um, yeah. but um, yeah, really squidgy. Now, if your planting um, was quite hard, see this one's quite hard. That mm -hmm. one's like softer, there's giving it. Um, you want it like a really ripe banana that you don't want to eat. Yeah? Right. That's what you want it. But if your planting isn't ripe, um, you could roast it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Roast it so it gets completely black, and then as yeah. you slit it, it's oozy, and then you can put it in. Basically, all you're doing is reducing the sauce. That's all yeah. you're doing. And then it's going to thicken up because the planting is going to act as a thickening agent. Yeah, it's going to thicken up the sauce. You're going to have the lovely um, tamarind, um, which is going to have all those um, sour notes, and then mm. it's just going to be like a chili jam. So, whichever way you do it, it'll work. Fantastic. You yeah. like recipes like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go put the plant in. All right. Um, so so Nat, Nat, Nat's on here and she's just asked, um, would you roast it in its skin? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah definitely. Okay. Yeah, in the skin. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to be <coughs> careful if I talk too much. I'll start. I'll start to work. Uh... Yeah, we'll okay. be back talking too much and then cough. So, yeah, so um, the, the planting's gone in. Yeah. Fine up really nicely. Hold on, hold on. Oh, great. Where's? Yeah, if you can lift it up a little bit more, that's perfect. Yeah, it's a great. It's a very hot pot. <laughs> so, um, so we're doing that. Let me have a drink. Mm. So once that's um, nicely browned, then yep. we add like a tablespoon of um, cumin. So I get my cumin from the local um, corner shop, and that's one pound twenty nine. And a lot for one twenty nine. Yeah. Is, is cumin one of those? Um, I was going to ask what what sort of spices do you feel that you, you should always have in a, in a store cupboard for you know some really good food? Is um, it cumin my go to? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I, my go-tos, um, cumin, uh, cinnamon. Yeah. Um, I mean, that smells gorgeous now. You're really getting that lovely aroma of the uh, cumin being browned off. But um, I'm just going to turn it off because it's still browning. The yeah. cast iron um, pot keeps very hot because I've just realised that after soaking the tamarind, I haven't pulsed it through. So I get my hand in there. Yep. And it's all squidgy. And that's fine. And what you're doing, you're, re you're releasing the seeds. And then you just sieve that through. Now, that when is. you sieve it through, don't batter it through the sieve with, with a spoon, because it might ruin your sieve. Yeah? <laughs> so you've just got to be careful with it. So you just pulse that through. Yes, yeah, so cinnamon. Um, um, Cumin, um, chili flakes, um, mm. curry powder. My mum would use a lot of curry powder, um, which I use. Um, I think those are the main ones, really. Right. Yeah. And the, the, the tamarind um, 
Block, you got that. Fr- where, where, well, where can you get hold of tamarind block? Because it was, I was when I saw the recipe originally, I was thinking, oh, I'm not sure how I could get hold of tamarind. Mm. Um, local um, Indian shops, um, African shops. Um, it's like your local um, corner shop that kind of has everything. Um, you can see it in some Oriental shops as well. Um, you know, it's used, um, you know, quite a lot um, there. But um, but you can also buy paste. You can buy yeah. the, um, the tamarind paste, which I've seen in Sainsbury's and, and Waitrose. Um, but you'll just have to use um, less of it and just make sure it hasn't had things like um, salt added to it. Right. Okay. Really. Yeah, because you don't want it. You want to control the, you know, the taste of it. So now you see, it's just... Oh, lovely. You see that? Yeah? yeah. And then we just sieve it. So we sieve it. And then we just add it um, to the mixture and then let it cook down. Right. Okay. And that's all you do. But my sous chef has gone. Okay, he's gone. It's working <laughs> with family people. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, you want, you want me to put this in the sieve? Um, yeah, okay. put, it, put it in the sieve, um, take it through, and then that's it. Yeah? And then, what, and am then I what am I sipping into? Okay. I got these really big pots from Amazon. Should I get it for a glass, another glass? No, no, pot? no, no, no. no. <laughs> There. Oh, they're, right. they're great pots. Also, when you Absolutely. find things, um, it doesn't spit out because the pot, you know, absor- holds it, so you can sieve it through there. Yeah. Ilana, is it is it possible um, to buy? Um, can you use the tamarind that you can get in the squeezy bottles? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You could also use that. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, that that would work just as well, really. Um, but it's just making sure that you've got that lovely sourness. I mean, you could. Um, some people would actually um, reserve that and use it again, but for this yeah. purpose, I'll just take it through once on in the sieve, and then that's enough. Okay. Okay. And these these ingredients <laughs> are, are, are particularly things like the the plantain and the okra, which you're going to come on to in a the moment. There's there's a you know these are very strongly used in Africa. Do you, do you think, why do you think, uh, because we're seeing a lot more African ingredients being used at the moment, why do you, why do you think that might be? Um, I think um, Black Lives Matter has um, started and, well, it's not starting because we've always had it being of, you know, Black, African and BAME origin. Um, mm. But it's really um, highlighted the injustices um, that's, that's happening um, elitist structures um, um, white patriarchal structures um, and that need to be um, torn down. And, yeah. Um, Shall I add the tamarind into the? Yes. Yes. And right. yeah. And um, and we've been aware, and other um, cultures are suddenly aware of our food, and mm. um, and the fact that we've not really been represented in the food industry, or um, or and that actually food or a large part of food is very elite. And certainly the training of um, food and um, food writing and suddenly there's been an explosion of um, interest in our cultures well yeah. um, and we've also um, thought no you know this is what we do and um, we felt a resurgence of obviously a lot of um, anger but then that's moved to really highlighting our own cuisine and not waiting yeah. for the world to catch up it's like yeah. well this is what I'm doing anyway yeah. So, um, so join up or go home. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really do believe that. Yeah, I really do. And yeah. um, and this is it, unapologetic um, about it. I'm just going to add some time. Yeah. Time. Um, yeah. Oh, no. It's already in the rubber band. If you... No, no, OK, take that out. Um, and then um, can you cut up the um, tomatoes, please? Yeah, so, um, and we're cooking like we've always done but also yep. with this resurgence of interest. Um, you know, there's been a great coming together as well, really. Um, just take it over there, Wes. Right. Um, yeah, so that's why I feel um, there's a lot more of it around. Fabulous. And did you, did, what sort of dishes were you making on Crazy Delicious when you were there? Um, I made, well, the first course was a bit risky, but it's something I, kind of wanted to do. I, I started my inspiration with um, an apple and it was a toffee apple I started and then I kind of moved it forward and I, I combined it. I did an apple mousse. I did a frozen apple, which is quite a, a um, 
a very contemporary dessert, right, but then I combined it with um, black pudding. Um, and I don't eat black pudding, um, but I remember going to the supermarket and thinking, what does it need? I knew, I was aware that I was cooking for Heston, so, you know, I wasn't going to do something a bit ordinary. I knew I wanted to stand out. So, um, so that was the first dish, and that went down incredibly well. They said, my food was Michelin star quality. So that was amazing. Uh, let's get rid of that. Right. Um, so, and then for the second dish, um, my food was changed uh, two I'm days before the, filming. I'm going to wash the bowls now. Okay. Um, so um, it was changed two days before filming. So I, um, I was doing a sort of five meat um, oxtail beef cheek um, meatball. It was based on a deconstructed spaghetti bolognese. Um, but instead, um, I remember at five o'clock in the morning, I reached into the cupboard. Um, I've been experimenting with um, meatballs. Um, and also thinking like a chef, I was like, what, how do I deconstruct spaghetti bolognese? And thinking, you know, okay, I should do this and just coming up with ideas and sketching them. And then I thought, okay, um, enough of the meatballs. Um, so I got some licorice out of the cupboard and there were some tomatoes and at five o'clock I thought let's let's have a go and um, I put them together and then I thought to myself this works and that that was what I presented to them yeah it gave it um, I mean I added other things like a yeah. burnt aubergine um, the flesh inside so you had that again that bitterness I wanted to get the umami um, yeah flavor that was what I was really quite obsessed with because once you've got flavor you know yeah I mean I really do feel that and then all the other bits can be, um, you know, finessed. Now I'm going to add some salt and pepper to this mixture. Now, um, I'm just wondering it's if you can see it. I mean, the dish that you're making right now has got, it's got that real umami element in it as well, hasn't it? With all the yeah, sweetness. Yeah, and yeah and definitely. I'm going to see if this will... It might not come over. Hmm. Um, it's a bit hot, but... Oh, that's great. Yeah, we could we can see the consistency yeah. now. That's great. Yeah. Can you see it's still quite bitty? You can see yes. the chilli. Yeah. yeah. But what we're going to do, once that cooks down a bit, we're going to blend that. Yeah? Okay. Now I can't talk. But we're going to blend it. And then okay, it's gonna, all the flavours are going to amalgamate. Now you can already see that's quite thick. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to get thicker because you don't want a thin jam. Yeah? No, definitely so um that's that and also with this recipe you add bits to it you know you you make you know if you want more planting in there you're like i want more planting if you want more chili in there you're like i want more chili just put it in so that's you know? yeah. blending now and if we are I'll take this, i should take this time don't now. start blending yet all right um, i'm gonna add some just some salt i know i'm gonna have to add some later can you add some pepper oh i forgot the tomato ketchup and the soy can you add the tomato ketchup tablespoon of tomato ketchup yeah, and then the soy. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And, and you um, can just let that cook, and you can then, yeah. when it's ready, just put it in the fridge. It'll keep, and it's just a wonderful addition, you know, to have with, you know, with planting, with vegetables, but, you know, in the burger, it's an, it's an amazing taste. And also, it's, you know, vegan. Yes, so. yeah, that's it. Great, great thing about this dish is it's is the, the vegan and the um, plant based. If we want to use the <laughs> more trendy term, anyway. Um, I so <laughs> you do try. Thank you. So you're going on to um, do the um, so the uh, the okra. Is that something that you can get from most? Yes. Um, Markets and um, in fact, even even some even larger supermarkets sell opera now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I've not seen it in a large supermarket now. No, okay, no, I've not seen it, but you know what? Um, but it's also good to support local, yeah. You know, I'm really true. because when you go to local, you're going to see other things there. You're going to be, What's that? What's that? And the great thing about my local shop is that you get these, um, has the pepper been put in yet? Yes, the pepper's been put in, okay, yeah, yeah, um, yes, chef. Um, I'm just checking with you. Oh, my God, yeah, that's fine. It's good to ask questions. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, when I go there, there's always other people in there, and sometimes there isn't. And I loiter, and by loitering, you find things out because you can watch someone picking something up, and you're like, I wonder what they're doing with that. 
And so if someone then says, oh, you were first, darling, you were first, I always say, no, no, I'm still making up my mind. Because I know at that point, I can then just casually be like, are you going to cook with that? You know, and then they can <laughs> tell me. And then I've learned something, you know. So often, I couldn't quite. And also the things are so, so cheap. They're a lot cheaper than the yeah. supermarkets. Um, and you're supporting local, so why wouldn't you? And that's what I absolutely love about it. I picked up some cassava, frozen cassava leaves um, that I've not used before. And I had a great conversation with the girl who was telling me what she um, used them for. Then when I, when I got the tamarind block, um, it was um, from another shop. And there was a lady, and she, literally, she was buying chicken feet like it was no tomorrow. And I was just like, what? You know, so I kind of loitered, but, I, but she wasn't ready to talk. She wasn't into talking. So I just had to look and wait outside a bit. And then she, she disappeared with her trolley. But you never found but, but out. I feel like I missed an opportunity there because I was like, what's she going to do with all those chicken feet? It's obviously good. You know, there's so much recipes that you could do with chicken feet. I haven't used chicken feet for, for years. My mum used to cook with them. So again, it's going back to that waste not want, you know, waste not want not. Yeah. Um, using up every bit, um, all the bits. Mm. But it's a style of cooking that I think we're, we're interested in. We've gone... We're going slow. We're using up everything that we have. Yeah. We're thinking yeah. about sustainability. We're thinking about using up everything. And we're also being economical because, you know, there's a pandemic on and uh, businesses are, yeah, 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 yeah. Fallen, so, yeah. Well, it's, it's, I mean, I'm sure that this, you know, the waste not want not and buying local and sustainability will, con you know, will continue going forwards um, because yes. it's, it's coming up, coming up with some great, some great dishes. Um, and if we're returning to our heritage a bit more, so, so be it. That's a good thing. Exactly. Mm. So what Liz is going to do now is we're going to um, cut the, um, the planting. Yeah? Yeah, you start cutting the planting. Um, now, I just top and tail uh, the planting. And then it usually you know, comes up like a banana. Yeah? And then I just peel it. There. It's like you might have gotten a banana. <laughs> oh, I don't know. So it's that's a bit more difficult to peel, I think. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. And, and we want it to be firm because we don't want it to be too squidgy because it will break up in the frying pan. Yeah. This, so, this, um, trick, this trick in, in topping and tail in the plantain was also what we saw with Frida who was making using plantain oh, right. last week. So okay. it's the way to cut plantain, top and tail it first and then slice it down so that you can peel it rather yeah. than peeling it with a banana. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I would always um, fail at this point because my mother would get equal bits, um, you know, without one being um, too thick so that they would cook evenly. Um, so, cutting those into thirds? Yeah, we're cutting them into thirds. But one always ends up being sort of slightly thicker than the other. It really doesn't matter. They're, you know, they're just pieces like that. Yeah, okay. Then ways. So Wes is going to do that, rule of thirds, and then we're right. going to blend this down. We're going to take the time out, because um, we don't want that blended. And then after Okay, so the time, the time you just threw in as a sprig? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to take that out. There we go. And then we can blend this down. Once it's blended down, it's going to be so thick. Um, did you put the soy sauce in? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Of course, we need more. No, 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 it's fine. Okay. Um, and should I cut another one? No. Okay. No, we'll be we'll be fine with that. And then with the okra, Wesley, show me the okra. That's cut lengthways. We've just trimmed the top off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we are. Great. That's the okra. Now with the um the what would you call it? The um, rice flour or tapioca flour, um, mixed with the corn flour. Um, what that does, that coats the top of the okra. So it's almost like, um, some people complain, and they're like, I don't like okra, I don't like the slime. I'm like, well, mm. it's okra. It's like saying I don't like banana. Oh, I like banana, but I don't like the taste of it. I don't know, I don't get it. Um, so I think that's part of what okra is. Um, yeah. You can have it in stews, and that so-called moisture within it, I don't really like the word slime, um, mm. can act as a thickening agent. Mm. However, if you're dusting it with flour, it also stops stops it being a bit slimy, um, yeah. if you know what I mean. Um, so it just adds like, it's like a batter without using, you know, a batter. Um, and then you deep fry it 
and so it's nice and crispy. Now, I add um, um, za'atar uh, spice yep. um, on it just to give it a bit more oomph. And then afterwards, I put plenty of salt and pepper in. So it is literally quite salty. So again, you're getting different hits doing different mm. things. Mm. What else do you like using okra for? Um, gosh, um, I remember when I was very young, my mother bought me a cookbook and it was the Three Degrees cookbook. I don't remember. And she had um, one of them, her amazing singers back in the day. Um, and oh, well, Three Degrees, like the band? Yeah, yeah, the Three Degrees, okay. one of them. <laughs> Sheila Ferguson bought out a cookbook. Yeah. And yeah. in that cookbook was um, okra uh, gumbo. And it was okay. okra... Um, uh, garlic, onions, fry up the okra, and uh, roast uh, sausages. And then when the sausages are roasted and browned, you add them to the okra, then with some tomato, uh, with some paprika, and you make a stew. And that was kind of the first thing I cooked with okra. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So, but again, now I kind of just use spices, use it in stews, cook it on its own, fry it, deep fry it, roast it. Um, yeah, I'm kind of just... I, I love aqua, so yeah, and it takes spices beautifully. Excellent. So, if you can, you just quickly run through in case because there's a few more people joining us now. What was in what's what was in the um, the tamarind um, the chip the chili? Okay, the tamarind. It started off with um, onions and garlic. Yeah. Um, and chili. Um, then um, I fried that off. Then I added the cumin, a tablespoon of cumin. Um, after that, I added some of the chilli pepper. Um, I think I used three small hot chillies. Um, browned all that off. Um, I'd already soaked the, um, soaked the tamarind block. Um, yep. When I'd sieved that through, I added the liquid in, and now it's just reducing down nicely. So I will... of consistency um so yeah. once that's done i mean you could do this the, the night before the day before mm -hmm. but it's um mm, yeah you can smell the sourness um and the spice in yes it, um you know which is lovely so right now we're going to ah we are our, let's just put that there now we've you now we've got the rice flour and the corn flour I've sieved that through and put it in a Tupperware container. Okay. Which I like because it's... And then what I do... Where's the... Oh, yeah. Oh, closer, closer. See on that cut side? I yes. I just put it in there. Oh, okay. That's all I do. I'll put quite a few in. That's not. What? Uh, I won't think all of those are cancer, are they? But they will be. Oh. Okay. And notice I didn't fill it up right to the top. There'll be a method in my madness, was me? I should hope so, otherwise it have been, all these years have been pointless. <laughs> and then they're just nicely coated. Right. Yeah? Yeah. So there you have it. And then that's... That's ready to deep fry. Fabulous. And um, what's, what sort of oil are you using for the, the deep frying? Vegetable oil, uh, about 400 mil, 500 mil. Um, I'm doing it in the big pot as well. Um, Why are you doing it in the big pot? I'm doing it in the big pot so it doesn't sort of uh, spit with the oil. Um, so when it's in the big pot, I can use my um, spider and, you know, it's long so you don't get oil sort of spitting at you there. Okay. So that's what, that's what I'm, I'm doing with, with that. So Wesley, uh, if you prepare the okra. All right, where shall I, where shall I leave the... Uh, in, in a plate, plate, find a plate to leave it. There's, There's a plate over there. there. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's quite, a, it's quite a quick dish. Aha, what we nearly forgot. Time, so then, uh, yeah. What we nearly forgot is a za'atar. So oh, we'll right. add that. Uh -huh. Put it back in. So add that to it, and then just give it a shake. Make sure you put the lid on, yeah? Yeah. And then that's it. And your 
Are you you're pla are you planting the um, the um the jam now? Yeah. Jam? yeah, I am. Just, just pop some in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, this will get the this will get the sauce thicker. Yeah. He's always interested in what I'm doing. Well, you know, he's got a task, but he's always interested in what I'm doing. Is there something wrong with the game for them? Do you like or do you not interested? No, 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 no. I like it interesting, but you've got work to do. There was a, a question. No, I'm out. Elena, there was a question from Rebecca here. She was hmm? Elena, sorry, there was a question from Rebecca who was um, a little bit worried about using ketchup, thinking that it might overwhelm the taste, but you, you, you say it wouldn't. No, no. Do it, okay. try it, Rebecca. No, because the overwhelming taste is the tamarind. It needs okay. tomatoes to soften it. But yeah. if you don't like the ketchup in it, don't use it. Remember, I've also used fresh tomatoes as mm -hmm. well. So, mm -hmm. adjust it to your taste. Great, perfect, thank you. Now, it's very thick. So, um, if it's bubbling away like a, like a witch's cauldron, it's gonna catch at the bottom. So at this point, I might add some water because we also need to be working you know, on the other, on the other things. Um, so Wesley, just pass me some water from the kettle. And it'll just nicely bubble away and the flavors will increase so i've just done that added some water because i don't actually want it to catch to burn at the bottom okay you've got to protect, you've got to protect your saucepans <laughs> so then that's that i'm now also going to taste it as well and see what it's like <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Great. Right. Mm, it's got a nice kick with the chilli. I might just add a little bit more salt. Huh. And remember that um, sourness is going to be beautiful with the, um, with the sweetness of the um, fried plantain. Yes. So then that will just cook down nicely. There we have it. Wonderful. Great. Very, very... Very quick, actually. Yeah, really quick. And so you say now, that, um, sorry, carry on. So now I'm going to light the oil, um, the vegetable oil for the um, okra fries. Um, and then it'll be the frying pan for the, um, for the planting. I'm just wondering if I had my mother's hands here that I could just literally pick it up by hand, but, but I don't. So the oil's going on here in the large pan, and then yeah. I'm just going to also, at the same time, fry to get that. It's really annoying when you use matches. Um, it wasn't you have the pan on, but we kind of need that on, so. Yeah, we do. Um, I'm just gonna put this on here. So then that will be, the cast iron will slowly be heating up, and then we'll fry the plant in as well. I just said fabulous. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, would, you, would you, I mean, we, we haven't seen the finished dish yet, but could you tell us, a, we, we, I understand that you've got some amazing um, wines that are going to be paired with this. Could you tell us a little about the wine? Right, yes. Um, well, I, um, yeah, I've um, really been blessed, again, with all this um, knowledge and information. Um, I'm learning so much as, um, you know, a cook. I wanted to um, learn more about um, Bain and Black Vineyards and wine uh, producers um, and writers. So Vin, Vin, Vin Inclusive, uh, Susan and Vin Inclusive, introduced me to Anushka at um, Sweet Spice, and she's a wine expert on sommelier. And I, I sent her the recipe and asked her um, if she could come up with some suggestions with which to pair. And uh, she came up with... Um, a couple, um, one of um, which was this Rosso del Palazzoni, um, which is here. And um, I've contacted the um, 
the vineyard and um, they're amazing. The vineyard's owned by um, the, a black man who was the advisor for Barack Obama. Um, he's based in the States and his vineyard is in Italy and he oversees all the production. He's got an amazing team. So um, thanks to um, Anushka at Sweet Spice, um, she found a, um, the, the importer, wholesaler, wine merchant, and I called them. They had um, a, a shop in Hampstead. and took a while to get through to them, but um, she kind of told them all about who owns the vineyard, and then I was able to get it. Um, thanks to them, I got it uh, delivered today. Um, so that, that was brilliant. So I bought and ordered that. Um, and then um, Susan Evin Inclusive also introduced me to um, an amazing um, couple, um, uh, Lindsay and Sergio, who run um, a vineyard and winery in uh, Crouch End in London. And they invited me to their harvest, and that's called um, Black Book Winery. And so they're part of the Bain community, I believe. And um, yeah, they, yeah, they do it all from scratch. So um, their wine is in the fridge. I'll put them, well, well, it won't be done, it's just the, the, okay. the, the proper flower and everything. And that's called the Rebel Rosé. So again, um, that's quite, those, um, it's quite really dry and quite fruity. So she said that will balance out um, the mellowness and the sweetness in the, um, in the plantain. So I've got those, but also, Along with that, we're waiting for the oil to heat up. Along with that, Susan um, also recommended yeah, uh, the rose is seventeen ninety five, um, and the um, the um, wine. Um, I keep forgetting the name. But the Rosa del Palazzoni um, is uh, sixteen ninety five. I'm learning about wines. I mean, I would just like drink it, drink it, but. Now I'm really learning about what am I going to pair with it and how is it going to balance those flavours and, um, and how is it going to contrast those flavours. So I'm really, it's like, my God, trying to think as a cook, but then the wine brings something in. So I'm looking to, um, you know, to take a course and just learn more about wine. Um, it's, um, it's so interesting. And also what's important is that the producers recognise that the Black and the Bain community are consumers. And yeah. we do we drink wine because you know we have sophisticated taste here. Um, but most of the wines that you buy, someone will say goes with spicy. Goes with spicy what? Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, how can you say that? Um, goes with spicy sausages. Um, so it's very Eurocentric. Um, so um, it's good having um, wine um, producers and experts in the industry who um, can actually put the pressure on and say no, that's not good enough. Actually, um, you need to be more specific about wine and, um, and make wines to um, target us because we're consumers in our own right. Um, and that's why it's quite exciting. So I've also put a link on that in my, on my Instagram page. And as I said, I'm learning um, you know, so much. So um, uh, Susan also recommended from Vinclusive, she also recommended a Puli Fume. I haven't drunk it yet. Um, where is it? Box standard one you'll see at um, any supermarket. And now there's ones under a ten, and there's ones like over a ten and like fifteen quid. Um, right. So there's that as well. But that's not special because you're not getting any of the history, you're not getting any of the knowledge. But no. you know, but but it's there. And also, I don't know what they say. Yeah, look, this limited edition blend is excellent as an aperitif or with fish, poultry, white meats, risotto, sushi, and goat's cheese. So what does that tell me? Is that all it's good for? What about, would it, you know, but also yeah. she said, um, you know, but also maybe recommend, you know, can also go with Elena's planting and tamarind jam, you know, jam <laughs> is what they should have said. Maybe they'll listen and watch this later and learn. Exactly. Get it. Let's get a new edition for that wine and get that on the label. Um, <laughs> we've, we've, got, we've got another question, actually, about the okra. Yeah. Um, do you have any gluten-free <laughs> options for, for the okra? So rather than using um, the, the, um, the, the, flour that you use yeah. is, is there um, now, um well i've only used it with the flour um but i know pretty of um woodfields you she has a um a fried up and she uses mind you she uses it with chickpea flour okay so i'm sure that will work and i'm sure she'll pass the recipe on 
Okay, right. But I haven't used chickpea flour. I've only used this. But I'm sure she. I know she sells that in her cafe, and it goes down really well. So that's an idea. I'm just um, putting some olive oil in the frying pan there because um, I'm going to fry off the plantain. Right. Oh, Wesley just try uh, some okra there for me. All right. Yeah. How many should I add in? Just add one to see how well. Obviously, you just add one just to see um, how well it tastes. Go on, go on. Um, no, 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 no. Use a spider. All right. Because I don't want you burning your hands. Okay. So you're burning your fingers. Because that's... That doesn't seem to be much at all. We've actually got the winemaker here from Tuscany at the moment. Oh, yes, yes, please. Laura? Is it Laura? I think it might be. I'm going to see if I can get her to join. Well, it's a good job you didn't get me to add her. You know, I'm useless with her. I'm trying, but I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this properly. I'm clicking on her name, but I'm not sure what's coming up here. Oh, the the spice boss says gram flower. Yay, spice boss. Yeah. Try it with gram. Oh, maybe you already do it. Oh, it is Laura. Hi. Um. Yeah, that's. I don't know if you can hear that now. It's just going to make sure that we just turn it over. You can add more. All right. Because the pan's quite big. Well, get the spider ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm, my my technical ability doesn't seem to be able to let me get Laura to to, to join, probably because there's just there's two of us on the screen. Wait, but maybe hi, Laura. Laura. Laura Laura asks to be added. Yeah, we've got nice. sweet spice then... sweet spice wines here as well. We've got so many wine people here tonight. I know. I know. Friday yeah. night, eh? Friday night. Um, oh, Laura's okay. Laura's saying Laura's saying hi to everyone, and she's loving the recipe and the cooking for Hey, thank you. Yes, we're going to put it on there. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much for the wine suggestions as well. It's really, really great to have these. Oh, I'm, Typical I'm just, Friday night. Yeah, so I'm just literally browning them off. They're not as brown. They're not as brown as they should be. Yeah, they're not as brown as I want them. Yeah, and they're not as brown as I want them. Okay. Yeah. But you see, after I, after they have become brown, um, I will put them on the uh, kitchen paper to obviously drain the oil. Then I'm going to sprinkle them with salt and pepper. Yeah. Are yeah. we going to put them on? Yeah. So, yeah, we've got, so it's, it's really Elena, we've, we've, we've got another we've got just over five minutes are we? yeah <laughs> exactly time flies oh my god five minutes it's like really semi cooked right okay let's get that out and let's get some water okay let's get some more opera in here thank you right let's get, get that opera in here yeah 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 Right, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start moving fast. All right. Right. So yeah, as you were, as you were. <laughs> How many does it sound five? Does five sound good enough? Yeah, put a bit more in. All right, go for it, honey. Okay. Yes. That's good. And with the bur the burger buns, you're just using a normal. Are you going to use a normal burger bun for this, or yeah, anything? just like a brioche, like a brioche. A brioche. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's all we're doing with that. And maybe Wesley can start to do that. Put the grill on Wesley. Okay. So yeah, so it's just one of those easy, easy dishes. I mean, the off the uh, pantry started to. Um, brown off which is good and you know this also makes for a great brunch dish and you know as well as a friday night but instead of having you know traditional chips you can actually okay, you know, have, to, yeah, have well, something that's just a bit special really yeah. and it's nice to actually have food of your culture mm -hmm. but cooked um in this way so the octopus grounding off really nicely here yeah. Right. Why am I doing all the work? Because I was like in the grill. Okay, fine. Well, you finish that. Right. You finish with some, put, put, take the cooked opera out because otherwise they will burn. All right. Um, the plantain's doing. And so let's see if we can uh, at least get one plated up. Yeah, we're, but, we're it's, um, but yeah, it's, just, it, it's easy, but it's just nice having it with the, with the tamarind. I'll use one of the smaller pieces of the... Um, 
planting so we can get that lovely um, colouring. Now, what's lovely about the planting, you've got that sweetness here. You'll also have the sweetness um, within the uh, jelly. Um, but what I do, I like to coat it with um, maple syrup or honey. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, don't use honey um, for vegans, but for vegetarians, it just has, you know, more of a sweetness to it. Um, which just makes it really tasty. So, so yeah, so I, I think I can put a few more in there. Yeah, yeah, put some more. Um, and then after that, I top it with um, some red onions. So you've also got, um, you know, that lovely um, crunch um, here. So it, um, it works out really well. That. If it does suddenly cut off, we will we'll try and sign everybody back on onto, onto live. So if, if it does cut off suddenly, as Instagram can, okay. um, please please come back to us on, on the Woodfield Pavilion. Okay. But, but at the moment, in the moment, we're sort of all right. A few more minutes. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, the, yeah. Yeah. the upper crisps are looking really good as well. They're cooking quicker now. Yeah, whereas it says they're cooking quicker. Well, one of those could be used a bit longer, I think. This doesn't matter, just put them in the other right. side. And what's nice is that they're really crispy. Roughly how long would you cook the plantain for? Um, I'd say about 10, 15 minutes. To, I mean, okay. if they're cut thinly, they're, they're yeah. cool. until they're golden brown, really. Mm. Um, nice. Yeah, just until they're golden brown. Um, Planting doesn't take that long. Oh. Um, but you got <laughs> there's um. Uh, mind if I just unscrew that the sink back there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. I'm gonna take that off the heat there. Uh, there's still some more. Doesn't matter. Okay. We've got enough pan there. Uh, pretty, pretty tells us that this this your lovely recipe is actually on the um, pavilion's um, menu this weekend. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, I think that um, it's gonna go down very well because it's such a it's such a sweet dish. Um, but also you've got that lovely. There's so many hits with the with it. It's um, no. yeah, it's, it just it hits every note. Oh, they're done. The show, show. So the burgers are done. So what Wes is going to do is wait. Aha! We're going to start to plate. What we're going to wait for. So we're going to put burger base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burger base. Mm. Is that a top or a base? That's the top. Hmm. All right, sorry. Uh, you want me to put it back on? No. No. I wanted two two bases, two tops. Oh. Let's start just with the base. Put Those the are two bases. There. I know. Put the base down, yep, and leave them there. All right. Put some of the chili jam on there. All right. Um, now, Wes is going to do some plating, which is going to be interesting. Oh, why is it going to be interesting? To see how you get on with it, and I'm sure you'll do very well. All right, that doesn't sound very interesting. <laughs> looking good, looking good. Um, like Mrs. Muscle Woman here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you've got that lovely roundness here, right, which is there. So, what we're going to do, we're going to turn that off. But remember, guys, if, if, if we cut off, we're going to come back, um, back on Woodfield very quickly. But ca carry on, carry on. Right, we're, yeah. we're, so, um, we're okay. put some of the jam. Get a spoon. Well, like a couple of minutes. Jam on there. Lay that jam on. Yeah, exactly. Go, go, go. Going, going, going. <laughs> and then I just use the sea salt. Oh, that's good. We can yeah. see that. Great. Yeah. I like them salty and I like them with a bit of a bite. But remember, they've still got these Zatar spice. You know, on them too. Right? Yeah. How's that? There's uh, lots of great shout outs here for Wesley as your sous chef. They say oh, he's, he's doing amazing. a good job. He's amazing. He's doing a great he job. really is. We'll put more jam on. Don't be mean with the jam. I'm not big back okay. Yeah? Right, okay. Right. Bring one over here. Okay. It's okay, over here, over here. All right. One more that you can do with it. Right, now move out of the way so they can see you with the camera. There we go. There we go. I'm putting the balance in the plant in there. 
That was nice. We can yeah. hear it, we can hear I wish we could smell it and I wish we could taste it more than anything. <laughs> yeah, I wish you could smell it too. So what we're also going to do, we're going to just literally drizzle that with a bit of honey over to the camera, darling. All right. There's honey you're using, but you could use maple syrup. Could use maple syrup, yeah. Right. So there we have more onion than we need. <laughs> We've well, got the chili jam that's, okay. there, right? And the okra fries, gosh, amazing. And then the okra fries, now that isn't a top, that's probably because I use two bases, so that's my bad. Um, people, are people are drooling, I can see. But yeah, but that's that so, because it's fantastic. just... Fantastic. to get the top? No, it's fine. Actually, yes, get a top. All right. Um, so yes, you've got. You could add more chili jam um, yeah. there, but there, that's a that's a better top there. Uh, we wish you could taste it too, Laura. Yeah, Laura saying she wish she could taste this. But again, these are they're just so crispy. Um, yeah, they are quite amazing. Um, it's just nice using. I'm doing my food photographer's bit now. Yeah, that really is the dish. But that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I can't tell you how good that burger is. I really yeah. can't. Because you've got the hit of the chilli, you've got the sourness of the tamarind, then you've got the sweetness, and then you've also got the salt. So when they say heat, fat, acid, you've got all of that with this. Um, yeah. And it really is such a great dish. Now, if you want your meat, um, tam um, plantain is brilliant with bacon. And again, I'm okay. crazy delicious. When I did my um, West Indian brunch, um, I used, well, you know, West Indian Caribbean brunch, I used plantain with maple syrup and uh, with fried dumplings. So again, it was the same kind of hit. Um, all I've done this time is developed uh, tamarind. Um, so yeah, it really is worth buying some tamarind and just experimenting with it because it really is such a fantastic ingredient. It really is. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you so much, Elena. That, it's a pleasure. Um, and and you've managed, you've managed to do it all in the end. You've managed to do it all in the end as well. Ah, you know, you're a superwoman. <laughs> um, but also, you've got these wines to pair it with as well. Let's yeah. get the bottles. Okay. Um, you've got the, the... I'm going to hide this one. You've got the... Bring it over, bring it over. All right. Hide that one. Oh, which one? <laughs> you're showing the full one. I already had some of that already today. Because oh. I, I was doing a tasting. Yeah, that one. Bring it over, 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 over. Yeah, 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 yeah. So again, you've got, yeah. That's brilliant wine. Yeah, but you've got wines that sommeliers have actually looked at the recipe and said, you should have this with this, yeah, you know, perfect. rather than someone just telling you, oh, it's good with goat's cheese and risotto. Well, thanks so much for getting that wine over to us. So <laughs> Not at all. Um, and Elena, it's been an, been an amazing evening. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank and you. thank you, Wesley. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I mean, thank what, you. what I want to say, I mean, thank you so much. It's about supporting your local um, corner shop, supermarket shop, Indian shop, African shop. But it's also about supporting your wine producers and your sommeliers and your wine expert. Alicia at Spilling It has been wonderful, um, giving me so much advice. And she's a wine expert who writes for everybody. And she's been fantastic um, as well. And there's so much knowledge to be had that suddenly we recognize actually in the Bain community, we know about wine and we can educate um, other vineyards and wine producers who haven't considered us as uh, customers uh, on the wines that is properly paired with our food. So really start following um, these wonderful people that I've listed and, um, and you know, paying attention. Um, and that's the only way we're going to have more clout in the industry um, is by our, our pound and using our money wisely and actually demanding, actually, yeah. This is uh, the wine you should be stocking. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll, we'll look out. We'll look out for the, all the wines that you've listed. The recipe mm -hmm. looks um, absolutely amazing. I wish I could eat it right now. Um, anyone who wants to try it, um, go over to the pavilion. Uh, sorry, go over to the Woodfield Pavilion. It's on their menu from this weekend. And Elena, thank you so much. It's yeah. a pleasure. Thank you. And thanks to my lovely son and sous chef. Yes, yeah, thank you too. Thank you very much. Not at all. And also 
thanks to the Wandsworth um, um, Arts Fringe for um, partnering with us on this. Yeah. And um, this, was a, this was a great way to celebrate um, Black History Month. Yeah, definitely. Um, just seen that Frida, who was with us last Friday, was cooking from Nigeria. She's also been on, caught the end of this. So hi oh, to Frida. Hey, how you doing? So um, it's been a been a great been a great event. And so thank you, um, Pretty, for helping to put this on and for asking us to do this. We'd we'd really like to do more of these in the future. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we need. We need our our food to be visible because you know when we're seen, um, you know, we lift others up and they begin to realize that we are here. And then when we see other people who look like us, then we're, we feel lifted and supported. And that really means a lot. Excellent. OK, thanks all. Everybody have a great Friday night. And, and you. thank you all. OK, take care. Happy Friday, care, everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, mates. Bye. Thank you, Pretty. Bye. Bye. That's yours. Mm. Oh, nice, honey. Yeah.